actually the electric product. Ultimately, I mean, for an end user, it does two things. It saves you, I mean, some cost in terms of the energy consumption. Second, equally important is that the standards gives due value to the safety aspect of an electrical instrument. And that the end user, who is always not very conversant with the electrical functioning of the product, and uh, I mean, how to handle it properly. But by, by going by the labeling, by the standards, he, he gets some kind of assurance that yes, he can, he can handle it easily, safely. So, I mean, ultimately the object of standards and labeling is protection of human health of the person engaged in the using end user health or he, end users, you can overall well-being. That's the way. And his, it uh, economically also, it is uh, helpful because it ultimately the energy efficiency means the less cost to the user on, the, on a daily or monthly basis. So the selection is really good and I congratulate them for taking up this and it's important from too many aspects are important and not just the safety of that instrument. We will come to that and we have experts, a wonderful panel of experts here who are uh, will certainly go much deeper into the subject than I can do perhaps. And uh, uh, let me uh, also inform the participant who, that uh, we in India are very lucky to have a um, uh, very well established institution for standards and labeling purpose. Our national standards body, Bureau of Indian Standards is, uh, I mean, is well, I mean, was set up somewhere in the 50s or 60s. I, I exactly do not know, earlier known as Indian Standards Institutes. Now it is known as Bureau of Energy, uh, sorry, Bureau of Indian Standards. We also are very fortunate now that we have a separate body for responsible for uh, implementing and monitoring the energy efficiency uh, bureau of energy and efficiency which was set up in i think 2000 under the act energy conservation act 2001 and um, uh, we have a, uh, i mean lucky to have a representative miss samal from uh, director in the bee here to tell us to guide us and to inform us about the way forward on the subject there are, of course, uh, beside these two institutions, we also require uh, well-equipped laboratories for going, I mean, for testing the product, which is also available in the country. And we have a academic institution, the Manufacturing Association, which will be, are always part and very active stakeholders in any such endeavor. And uh, we are here also, uh, we have a representative from uh, our consumer association, uh, who is Mr. Ravi Shankar Chaudhary, Secretary General of Consumer Electronics and Appliance Manufacturer Association. And uh, also we have a, another senior advisor with CLASP, Mr. Pradeep K. Mukherjee, which is uh, provides technical support to the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So, as regards the cooking devices, uh, coming to the electric cooking device, because ultimately we are talking specifically about this uh, uh, appliance in this discussion mainly. Uh, it's still in the uh, it's a development stage in the sense that uh, its application in Indian applic uh, Indian cooking culture, or it's a uh, as so, I mean, if we have to modify it or innovate it to make it suitable to do the Indian style of cooking, that is still under development. Cooking devices are not a new development, but of course, it's a work in progress in the sense that, um, uh, I mean, its acceptability is still smaller in the country. And not only because of its suitability for the Indian uh, cooking culture, but also because, I mean, the lack of electricity initially, now we are a surplus nation, but there was a uh, not enough supply and the, the economic condition of the people also prevents them from using the electrical. So it's a, I mean, uh, issues are too many, but we will be, I think, uh, concentrating on some technical points only which uh, Ms. Samal and Mr. Chaudhary and Mr. Mukherjee will deal with it. And uh, 
Yeah, there are other aspects which I would just like to mention a couple of things is that uh, is the WTO technical regulation agreement. I mean, its standards are not just for use by a for the end user, but also it is important for the those who manufacture it and those who want to trade it in the sense export it because technical I mean the barriers for trade nowadays are not the tariff barrier it's a non-tariff barrier so so the standards which are put in place by different countries and which are further strengthened by the technical regulation which in in, in India we call it quality control order now that is something which we have to comply with to sell or export a product to another country. We have to match with their standards. So if we want to develop this country, India as a global manufacturing hub for manufacturing of electric cooking devices, then we have to be acceptable to the international community, to the many countries also. So development of standards, matching it with these uh, international standards also become an issue. So uh, awareness, the education about it is very important. And since we are in the process of development of this industry in India, and we have been, in, we are with, I mean, the Finovista is engaged in it. So we have to take care of those things also. And their participation is no less important. I think I have already taken uh, times allotted to me. I, I don't think uh, uh, there is much I can talk about it. Now I am not an expert on the subject. I am a peripheral, uh, you can say, the expert on the subject. But of course, we are very fortunate to have. So shall I first invite, uh, uh, before we go to the experts, yes, uh, we have uh, Dr. Nick Rasso, who is a well-known name in this uh, arena and um, we have been uh, and well-known face also in our uh, talk series he has been there supporting it and guiding us all the way so can i invite dr nisha south for his views and opinion and uh, guidance on the subject Is, is he there on, or some link but, is broken? Nick, you can able to hear or uh, you're on mute. Oh, he's having technical difficulties. Sorry, okay. so just uh, he's chat, chatting with us. OK, OK, we can join. In that case, we can move. Uh, I mean, if there is a problem, then we can move to. Yes, sir, we can. We can forward sir and uh, he will always uh, come back i'm sure there must be some minor issue it happens or nick may try to exit and then re-log in So I think we can move forward. Uh, yeah. We will uh, take Nick's uh, views uh, in the uh, forthcoming. Yeah. Uh, so, so in that uh, scenario, the next speaker or the panelist is Srimati Pravatanani Samal, who is a director in Bureau of uh, Energy Efficiency and has a around uh, 17 years of experience in energy management and policies. She has been. Uh, associated with several activities uh, being uh, taken under the en Energy Conservation Act and particularly under the National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency. So I invite and welcome Ms. Samal and request her to give her guidance to take this our endeavor forward. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible to everyone? Yeah, you are audible. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. So first of all, uh, thank you so much, Fino Vista, for inviting me to share uh, our experience uh, in uh, electric cooking uh, system and uh, what is the progress in 
standards and labeling for this uh, electric cooking system. So before going uh, deep into electric cooking and its uh, labeling program, I, I would like to give a short background about the standards and labeling program uh, in our country, India. So uh, it was uh, um, uh, during 2009 itself, we had uh, initiated the standards and labeling program and till now we have covered about 30 appliances. Uh, under this uh, SNL program and uh, out of which uh, 11 we have made mandatory and 19 appliances are under voluntary regime. So uh, slowly, slowly actually we see what is the kind of appliance uh, uh, the uh, we are using in the household at a regular manner. Also the hours of operation is very high. So uh, under, in that manner, we choose a appliance, domestic appliance to be covered under the standards and labeling program. Uh, we have other appliances in the pipe. Uh, standards and labeling program is under finalized uh, finalization stage, I can say. So uh, before uh, uh, giving the uh, uh, various parameters, what is the uh, scenario on the, we have fixed uh, under the standards and labeling program for this uh, electric cooking. I would like to uh, give some background about this clean cooking system. As we know, uh, there are various clean cooking system uh, uh, we are using right now in our country like uh, pressure cookers, then hot plate, uh, rice cooker, uh, and uh, the most versatile one is the induction stoves. So why uh, the, uh, we are talking only on induction stoves like uh, why be chosen uh, induction stove? Because this is a, uh, a wider, it is widely used uh, in our country uh, as a um, uh, replacement for LPG uh, and biomass uh, stoves. So uh, various benefits we already know this is energy efficient, uh, energy efficient in comparison to the LPG stoves and uh, other stoves. It is very safe, uh, then less pollution, and this is also another uh, major aspect of this uh, clean cooking. And uh, precisely, we can uh, also uh, control the temperature of this uh, induction hub or electric cooking system. And uh, comfort, uh, comfort and uh, uh, uniform heating aspect is also there. We cannot ignore that, that unlikely uh, uh, LPG and other biomass, other uh, cooking system, this uniform heating system is also another important aspect in uh, our this uh, induction hub uh, system. So uh, to uh, initiate the standards and labeling program for uh, this induction hub, we had uh, carried out one study at uh, uh, B level and uh, what we saw that uh, during 2018-19, the uh, population of the induction hub was approximately 4. Point, uh, about 4 million units and uh, if we see the growth of this induction hub about 10% CAGR. So uh, it will it will be growing at the rate of 10% uh, CAGR. And if we see what is the population of single zone and multi zone means single uh, hub and multi hub, 99% of the induction hubs are single zone. So uh, that is the uh, that those uh, uh, points are captured under this uh, study we have undertaken uh, for the induction hub uh, market analysis, and we saw that about uh, 3.8 billion units of electricity can be saved by 2030, and that is actually translating to GHG emission reduction of about 3.1 million ton of uh, carbon dioxide. So these are the parameters based on which we have decided that uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency should develop the standards for uh, induction hubs. And uh, our uh, schedule is uh, already under finalized, uh, final, final stage. We had also uh, 
sent the proposal to Ministry of Power uh, to uh, for giving uh, us NOC uh, to launch this program. However, that time this schedule was as per uh, this IEC 6201. And that time uh, BIS uh, standard was not uh, published. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, Ministry of Power had suggested us that uh, this program should be as per uh, in accordance with BIS standard. So uh, they had uh, to wait for some time and uh, the standards should be revised as per uh, BIS uh, standard for induction hub. And uh, now it is uh, actually we are happy to inform you that uh, the BIA standard is already finalized and uh, within uh, maybe a couple of days it is going to be published uh, very soon. Mr. Mukherjee is here and uh, he can actually clarify the when this uh, BIA standard is going to be uh, published uh, in Gadget uh, so that uh, we can actually formally, uh, formally we can launch this program uh, for induction hubs. So uh, basically, uh, uh, this uh, comparison, I had made a presentation, but I could not share with you. So there is a very good comparison if we see between the induction stoves and the LPG stoves. Uh, in, in, in terms of uh, flammability, this is flammable, this is non-flammable, then this is less safe, this is more safe, more heat, uh, this is less heat, and uh, this cannot be LPG, can be less control, and it can be controlled better. Then heat distribution is not uh, less even, here the heat distribution is even. So there are uh, many uh, good, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can say uh, the good, uh, uh, benefits in terms of induction hubs in comparison to the LPG stoves. So that is the reason why uh, uh, everybody and uh, uh, everyone uh, in the policy makers also they are pushing this uh, ele electric cooking very hard so that uh, uh, at least the uh, rural consumer segment not that even if, uh, uh, sorry at least the urban uh, segment not the rural segment at least the urban should adopt the induction hubs uh, first of all however uh, as a as a uh, as a woman and as a uh, uh, cook means um, uh, housemaker, I can say in India, uh, this is not uh, yet successful in even in uh, urban zone, I can say, because uh, if we see our pattern of cooking and the pattern of cooking in, in other countries like uh, Western countries, uh, uh, are very very much different so that is the reason why the indian uh, uh, household is uh, not very you know um, uh, uh, they are little bit uh, adopt so that that is where we need to act very aggressively and the uh, policy makers and the government should think some kind of awareness campaign and uh, we should uh, uh, organize more and more uh, you know this uh, dissemination workshops awareness campaign some kind of uh, uh, subsidy uh, at, uh, also may work so all these parameters should be considered uh, along with uh, these uh, standards because standard as mr sinha already informed that the standard is required for the for the confidence point of view, the uh, the the user should have some kind of confidence in the uh, stoves that yes, this is uh, the star level is there and the BIS level is there. So that means this pro product is uh, safe to use and this is more energy efficient. From that point of view, yes, of course, this standards and labeling program and BIS standard will help. However, for penetration, for pe more penetration and a good penetration in our country, the more and more uh, kind of uh, vigorous uh, uh, campaign is required, what I feel. So, and uh, um, we should also, uh, we are also thinking of some kind of brainstorming with the uh, induction hub manufacturers 
so that uh, some uh, some uh, uh, suggestions and some modifications were the, those are in our mind that we will uh, suggest the manufacturers so that in the near future those uh, uh, modifications can be integrated for better adoption in our kitchen so uh, this is the whole about this program uh, right now and uh, as we can see we had also some figure yes uh, we have some figure yes it, uh, uh, Indian energy security scenario portal, you can see that today about 1104 terawatt hour energy is being used for cooking. Uh, Ma'am, uh, excuse uh, me, we are losing your voice in between. I'm however, extremely sorry to bother you, uh, but you could switch off your camera uh, 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 maybe for the interim. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Perfectly, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, uh, then my, my last point was that uh, uh, as for Niti Aayog's portal, now we are using about uh, 1100 terawatt hour. Uh, energy in cooking system and uh, this can be uh, this can this this can be uh, uh, lowered as much as 410 to 600 terawatt hour by 2047 by introducing this kind of clean cooking in our country so this was the uh, uh, data reported in niti io so so all of us uh, like uh, bis should uh, uh, publish the document as soon as possible another aspect is also the qco also should uh, uh, should be uh, you know uh, include this induction hub system uh, as quickly as possible and b also uh, should come up with uh, this uh, standards and labeling program uh, at the earliest so these are the three uh, major uh, uh, i can say the uh, major uh, uh, activities that should be uh, carried out at the earliest so that uh, uh, the clean cooking system or at least the induction hub that is the major part of clean cooking system can be taken up in our country. So that's all from my side. If any uh, questions there or any uh, uh, questions in your mind, you can put up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Samal. Thank you very much for updating us about the various activities being undertaken by Bureau of Energy Efficiency and uh, Ministry of Power for promotion of electric cooking, their devices, standards. And I mean, we are happy to know that as you informed us that the standard for induction hub has been finalized, though not published, but shortly to be published. So that's a very uh, important development. And we would certainly be, I mean, this entire campaign would be benefited by it. And uh, your program will also have to be revised according to the standards developed by uh, BIS. I was not aware of it. So thank you very much for this information. And as regards the uh, induction hubs, uh, of course, it uh, from technical angle also, it requires development to shoot the Indian dishes or Indian cuisine because some of them are, I mean, at least in my knowledge says that it can't be made prepared on the induction hub as that is what we feel. Maybe it is our mental block. I don't know, but that is what we, anyway. So thank you once again, uh, Ms. Samal. And shall we move now to uh, Dr. Nick is uh, in the net connected or we can move to the next speaker and Dr. Nick can join later. So. I can speak now if that's convenient. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great to hear your voice, Dr. Nick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Nick Sorry is about a that. name in the field of, uh, uh, you know, promotion of electric cooking or rather clean cooking. And uh, he has been active. He's been active in this field and guiding us uh, right through sitting in UK, but always be there in time and well with well uh, intentioned advice. So the mic is to you. Hand over for Thank you to. Thank you. Um, apologies for, for messing you around and the speakers um, 
for the confusion. Um, I won't spend uh, too long. Uh, I just wanted to say a little bit about what we have been doing in the Modern Energy Cooking Services Programme relating to standards. Um, as I think has already been acknowledged, uh, our aim is to, to help people to shift the way they cook away from polluting fuels uh, uh, towards electricity, where we believe there's a great opportunity there for many people as the electrification is increased. And India is a prime example of this. Um, but if people are going to be able to cook with electricity, they need devices which are safe, reliable, uh, energy efficient, um, and meet their cooking needs. Uh, and so we're looking at how we can help to make that happen for people. And so we're working with big organisations that provide cooking devices, uh, especially in India and elsewhere, uh, that would be interested in these kind of market opportunities. Um, but we want people to have confidence. I think someone's already made that point that the consumer needs to have confidence in the, the products that they could be using. And standards uh, and publishing standards and having very transparent standards are a big part of that. Early on in the MEX program, we organised with CLASP, I think are speaking today, a Global LEAP Award for electric pressure cookers. And we chose electric pressure cookers because they have been proven to be very well suited to a great range of cooking, uh, particularly in East Africa, where a lot of our program activities take place. But Finavista have also been establishing their potential uh, to cook a whole wide, wide range of Indian dishes. So I think they've got a lot of potential and they are certainly extremely energy efficient. Uh, and so with CLASP, um, we defined a set of measures of safety, energy efficiency and usability. Uh, and we and, and CLASP then used those to identify a group of electric pressure cookers that were uh, of a very high standard and that then resulted in a buyer's guide. And I'm very pleased to see that one of the Indian companies, Ufla, that submitted an EPC uh, won an award for that, particularly for their energy efficiency. And that has already been used uh, by a number of organisations for bulk procurement of electric pressure cookers. Uh, and so it illustrated how the market can be supported by uh, this kind of standard development work. We're now working further with a number of countries where there are opportunities for bulk procurement of cooking devices uh, as a way of driving down the price and increasing availability of these devices. And again, India is one of those countries at the forefront of, of what we're doing. Um, and uh, again, in that context, having standards uh, are, are critical. Um, and so one of the things we recently did was commissioned a piece of work to look at the relevant standards that exist internationally that relate to electric cooking and electric pressure cookers and commission an organization to develop a more transparent and, and user-friendly document that sets out these standards. And that's going to be coming through in the next, uh, I think, two or three months. Um, uh, so that, that'll be interesting for everyone here to, to see. Um, and that's recognizing that there are a number of uh, international standards that exist. So for electrical safety, for example, there are good ISO standards uh, and pressure cookers. Uh, they, there are standards that relate to pressure cookers in general terms, but issues of kind of the wider safety and the build quality um, uh, are not uh, agreed internationally. Uh, so there's an, a need and opportunity in India, as well as other countries, to develop standards around that. And we're particularly interested in, in performance as well and how you define performance for a cooking device. Historically, people have tended to look at the, the very simplest of tasks, boiling water. How quickly can a cooking device boil water? How safely does it do it? How much energy does it use? But we see a need for cooking device standards that reflect the cooking culture in the country um, and that therefore reflect the realities of the users as they try to use these. Um, and uh, we, we were, uh, we were uh, my, my colleague Simon uh, informed me that there's a standard for grills and the, the standard performance for grills is based on their ability to cook burgers. So as you imagine, that standard was probably developed in the, the United States uh, and therefore would have less relevance in India. Um, and, and our feeling is that it would be really helpful for there to be standards which are based around well understood Indian dishes like a dal or a, uh, some other kind of uh, 
familiar to everyone dish. So that's that's uh, just a little bit of input for you to think about. Another area that's important is energy efficient labeling. I think that's going to be covered today. Um, we don't have anything that we're doing on that, but we do think that's really important because we do believe that energy efficiency is a key quality that we want to promote in electric cooking devices. Um, and we need to move towards something which is a kind of a standard on energy efficiency rather than comparing two or three devices. And then the last area that's important for us and for the world is waste and recycling standards. How does one define that in terms of making sure that products are able to be recycled or reused and uh, they'll have the maximum lifetime? So there's just some of the things that we're looking at. We don't have answers for many of these things, uh, but we're really pleased that Finavistra has brought together a panel of experts to look at what can be done in India in all these areas. So thank you for your time and uh, look forward to hearing the rest of the talks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nick. Thank you very much for uh, giving an overview of the requirement for manufacturing and development of cooking devices, uh, the safety aspect as well as its performance aspect. You covered both, and both are equally important. Uh, uh, you, in the end, you also talk about the standards uh, for uh, recycling, which is going to be very important for the I mean, environment angle, sustainable angle. And let me also say that there is one more aspect which we have, which becomes very important in the modern era in the context of smart manufacturing or digitally connected manufacturing. That is the connectivity between the systems, between the manufacturing production, the man who, uh, who uh, runs those machine and also in the supply chain. Because uh, the standards for connecting all can only ensure that you know the communication between the machine and the man, and that's how we will be able to uh, manage it in digitally. So anyway, now uh, moving on from uh, our next speaker to Mr. Ravi Shankar Chaudhary, who is Secretary General of Consumer Electronics and Appliance Manufacturer Association. Mr. Chaudhary is a management expert and the product of Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, and more than, I mean, almost uh, 15 years of experience in the in this line. And certainly, I'm hopeful that uh, we, we, we are going to be benefited by his views on this, uh, on the subject. He will help us guide. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhary. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for the great introduction. And uh, it's uh, my uh, privilege, my honor uh, to listening to the wonderful uh, speakers so far and uh, sharing my thoughts to the uh, great audience today. Uh, I hope my um, uh, slide is visible. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So uh, I have just uh, put together, I thought uh, I should take this opportunity to brief about uh, uh, our manufacturers, our members who are into uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, electrical uh, devices, cooking devices. Uh, we have 75 around members and uh, they uh, they are into manufacturing of some of these uh, appliances which we have been talking uh, in this session. Uh, and uh, um, more so we have uh, thematic uh, basically councils uh, forums wherein um, uh, the matters uh, on which uh, uh, the support is required from the regulators, uh, government departments, what are the concerns uh, our members, manufacturers face. And uh, so the, those forums uh, uh, provide them uh, the platform wherein uh, irrespective of their organization or brand, uh, they uh, share uh, their uh, basically experiences on the various thematic matters. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a council dedicated to BIS and BE, uh, and that too for different product categories. So uh, we have a dedicated council uh, on BIS and BE because they uh, are the regulators uh, who have been uh, dealing with various standards for various product categories. And I'm thankful to uh, BIS and BE for having a collaborative approach for while they uh, develop uh, standards or labeling for different product categories. So um, I had uh, uh, basically uh, uh, deliberation with our members, the manufacturers, under both uh, uh, BSB uh, uh, Council, 
uh, in which kitchen appliances, uh, et cetera, are deliberated, as well as uh, we have another um, uh, forum called Small Appliances Council, uh, wherein we uh, deliberate on uh, all the matters related to small appliances. So, um, and uh, uh, many of the members, manufacturers, they are into some of these appliances, like uh, electric pressure cooker, uh, induction cooktop, hot plate, kettle, microwave oven, electric oven, electric rice cooker, steam cooker, air fryer, and so on. Uh, for In some cases, they um, either manufacture in India or uh, their member firms in different uh, geographies, they manufacture um, these products. So I thought uh, of uh, uh, bringing in industry's views, uh, the views of manufacturers in this endeavor of uh, developing the standard uh, for um, electric uh, cooking devices. Uh, so um, I would like to basically mention over here that uh, uh, although we have developed, we have transformed form, we are in the process of transforming to modern um, energy, um, uh, precisely not just clean energy, but electric energy that is even cleaner. But um, in Indian context, it's uh, still a very uh, niche category. And the regions, uh, we got some hint from um, Mrs. Samal while she said that our cooking styles are different. Yes, they are different. Uh, we need, uh, um, for many of our dishes and delicacies, uh, we cannot rely completely on slow cooking. We need um, uh, frying, um, uh, fast cooking for various uh, dishes and delicacies. So these are basically, these might be the challenges. Uh, uh, because of that, it has not picked up so well. Unlike uh, in um, uh, Western countries, um, our speaker from UK is there in um, UK and other um, European um, uh, countries uh, where uh, it has uh, uh, a very preferred uh, uh, mode of cooking. So um, some statistics uh, which I learned that uh, even uh, say uh, 2 billion people have access to electricity. Uh, but uh, they, they do not um, uh, use uh, basically electric cooking devices. They use biomass or say LPG or other uh, uh, gas-based, uh, uh, biomass-based uh, fuel. So uh, we, uh, as the industry, as consumers, we are first a consumer and then we have, all of us are consumers here and we have additional responsibilities as manufacturer, regulator, policy makers, et cetera. So uh, we have to basically introspect why it hasn't uh, picked so well. And uh, if we want to uh, enhance its uh, uses, uh, what can be done? Because uh, while we develop uh, the standards and um, table, et cetera, uh, scalability is very much uh, uh, critical uh, with respect to, because all those compliances uh, require some uh, investment uh, some cost um, um, elements for manufacturers to adhere to. So scalability is very critical. And um, once we have identified the merits of uh, say electron, electric cooking devices, um, we need to uh, propagate it. We need to disseminate it to the users so that they get motivated. And in turn, the manufacturers um, get the desired uh, level of scale uh, to produce them, to uh, follow the energy program, Etc., which they have been doing for various other products appliances. So uh, this is a key takeaway that uh, um, say um, our India actually got electrification to the say we can say complete uh, electrification 99.99 percent in uh, 2018. Uh, however, um, electric cooking devices are not so common in Indian households, and the reasons might be many uh, because uh, these uh, uh, cooking devices may need a continuous supply of electricity. That uh, might be a challenge, especially in uh, semi-urban and rural areas. Uh, the um, uh, electricity is there, but uh, the level of uh, uh, electricity is required. Uh, that might not be there. Uh, that might not be ensured. So all these uh, um, regions uh, might be uh, discouraging um, uh, the consumers to use them. However, uh, we should uh, try finding the silver lining in the cloud. So um, if we see the burning uh, challenges, not just uh, for India, but for the entire globe, uh, the uh, climate change and the greenhouse effect, etc. So if we uh, basically uh, look at the key parameters, uh, first, uh, the energy efficiency, as well as shortage of uh, electricity uh, power, 
uh, and any any source of energy basically energy uh, crisis so uh, with respect to efficiency if we compare uh, uh, conventional gas stove lpg um, uh, stove and um, electric stoves and induction stoves so we can see the huge difference in uh, electrical appliances uh, vis a vis uh, gas stoves so for 40% efficiency that comes from gas stove it's in the tune of um, 74 for uh, electric stoves and 84 percent for induction stoves so this is i think is the key um, differentiator uh, not for only um, um, say consumers uh, but for the society to uh, opt to adopt um, induction stove or electric uh, cooking devices uh, for their small step towards uh, making uh, the environment uh, clean and green uh, to save power um, and uh, also if we see cost wise that is also a key um, uh, differentiator or key uh, deciding factors so if we uh, uh, see the uh, amount or the cost involved in heating to a liter of water so uh, Uh, if we uh, consider unsubsidized uh, lpg cylinder it comes to 10.8 uh, rupees around and uh, for electric stove or induction stoves it's a little higher than 5 uh, rupees per 10 liter of water um and even if we consider subsidized uh, cylinder it's uh, also 5 f- uh, um, a little over than over 5 uh, rupees per liter so uh, uh mr ravi uh, sorry to interrupt you but your slides yes. are not moving uh uh I don't know. Uh, okay. The slide. Uh, yeah, we can just see the first slide, which is the introduction uh, slides with the title I and your just logo. Just a moment. I yeah. will just check. yeah now we are on the slide which says transitioning to modern energy okay and that's that's yeah good. that's right okay uh, thank you so uh, i i am just uh, flipping to the next slide please let me know if it's visible okay okay the table with energy efficiency is it visible no we are still looking at no. the transitioning to modern energy for cooking slide okay which is the slide number 4 we are just Min- looking at that yeah minimal can you share with us also so we can also try to play from our side you can just uh, whatsapp uh, it to anshika we can put it on our screen sure anshika ji i am just uh, i'm just sharing it Hope you received it. Uh, yeah, I have sent it. Uh, so, uh, meanwhile, uh, if uh, uh, it 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 uh, gets uh, uploaded, uh, what I was uh, mentioning um, that uh, for um, uh, energy efficiency, the uh, uh, of course the electric like electric stove and induction stove. uh they have a very differentiating um, uh, percentage that is in the tune of 74% and 84% respectively uh, compared to the efficiency of uh, gas stove that is 40% uh while we um, consider on the cost uh, basically financial part um, uh, there as well uh, for uh, unsubsidized cylinder it comes to 10.8 uh, rupees per 10 uh, liter this is based on the study a scientific study conducted and for um, uh, electric stove or induction stove it's in the tune of 5 rupees per 10 uh, liter so here also there is a, a huge uh, difference um, uh, there is a cost saving uh, while using uh, electric stove or induction stove although there is uh, the initial investments are um, uh, quite high uh, but over the time if we see the operating cost and all there it has a differentiating edge right Uh, Ansika ji, please let me know if you have received it and uh, you are trying to upload it. I have already shared the screen also. Okay. Uh, you may please stop sharing your screen only then Ansika's screen will be visible. Yeah. Uh, okay.
Yes, uh, I have... Um, you try uploading it. Uh... Just give me a second. Please let me know to which slide I have to move. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, this slide, I am on this slide only, and Shikaji, slide number five. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can make it full screen. Right. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, uh, see the stats, uh, the key stats uh, for with respect to energy efficiency, um, as well as cost of heating, um, say, uh, on both these parameters, uh, electrical cooking devices have an edge compared to the gas stove or LPG uh, stove. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, modern um, uh, energy cooking or electrical devices have uh, got popularity. Uh, with respect to the technological advancements and uh, more so with respect to the uh, products which are uh, which consumers are getting at uh, not so high prices because of technological inventions uh, they are able to get uh, those products at a, a lower uh, price uh, than expected than it was uh, a few years back and also some agencies have developed uh, certain um, technical uh, parameters through which they can check the carbon credits uh, for the devices and all and uh, those um, uh, advancements are actually giving the confidence to the consumers, uh, to the manufacturers and uh, all the players in the ecosystem that by adopting uh, such devices, they are contributing to the mandate of global mandate of uh, reducing the carbon emission, uh, carbon footprint, etc. So um, I, I would say uh, uh, broadly that uh, the awareness is gradually increasing for uh, such devices. And uh, but still, there is a need to uh, create awareness and uh, uh, popularize these aspects of uh, electric cooking devices so that consumers opt uh, them. And in turn, it gives uh, manufacturers the motivation uh, to uh, basically manufacture them and um, uh, uh, facilitates the regulators uh, to formulate such standards which can be um, implemented by the manufacturers on ground. Uh, next slide, please, Ansikaji. And uh, another uh, key factor, say, uh, financing, uh, if we, because that is also a major uh, consideration aspect while we uh, look at the electrical uh, cooking devices. Uh, first of all, it requires a lot of initial uh, capex, uh, capital expenditure, um, compared to other uh, sources of uh, energy or uh, fuel. Uh, say, um, uh, if you compare it with LPG or some other um, uh, prevalent uh, fuel. Uh, it's too high. And uh, also uh, the infrastructural costs are, uh, in fact, infrastructural development are required uh, towards ensuring uh, transmission of um, um, electrical uh, distribution channel. Um, so on those fronts, um, it is it is uh, a lot of uh, structural uh, policy uh, interventions are required to ensure that uh, these devices are adopted by consumers. Uh, specifically in um, uh, semi-urban areas and rural areas where um, uh, majority of population um, uh, live, okay. Uh, even if we say um, uh, uh, discard the metro cities, uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, ensure that uh, such uh, type of electricity uh, will be available to consumers in India in the Indian context. So those are something which uh, the government, uh, the entire machinery has to uh, think of uh, before um, uh, developing, uh, say, implementing the standards. Uh, because uh, again, uh, scalability is the key uh, for manufacturers to implement uh, such table and um, um, programs. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, uh, uh, as usual, um, B, BIS, the regulators, uh, they would be uh, collaborating with our members, uh, with the manufacturers, and understand uh, the challenges uh, with respect to, uh, say, scalability or adhering or starting with uh, the uh, energy table, etc. And uh, I would like to give the confidence um, to, to the audience, to all of you, that our members 
were delighted while I shared the idea that uh, BE is in the process of developing um, programs. Um, um, and also I had the chat with Vimalji and I said that um, uh, um, our members would be uh, glad participating in the uh, exercise. So um, in principle, they, they all are um, uh, basically uh, quite uh, well uh, with these um, uh, programs for various ap appliances products. They have been um, uh, trying to implement them on ground. Uh, however, the concerns uh, are uh, uh, required to be addressed time to time. So these are basically uh, the various phases of the financing uh, per se this um, electrical cooking. So at different stages, different kind of uh, uh, financial supports are there. And uh, this is observed for this uh, product as well. But uh, government has a uh, key role to play uh, with respect to ensuring the infrastructure for electric cooking as well as electricity distribution. Uh, next slide, please. Ansika ji, can you uh, move to the next one? Oh. No, uh, so um, not moving, Anshika. Okay. No problem. Uh, so um, uh, the next one is basically the recommendations. Um, uh, what we are, uh, we thought uh, taking this yeah, uh, opportunity um, uh, to share. Uh, what what I think is uh, creating awareness on the product, the various appliances under electric uh, cooking um, is the key. Uh, it, it has to be uh, demand driven for uh, like any other product um, in the market. So uh, once the demand uh, enhances for such products, it will impact in a positive way all the players in the value chain, uh, the manufacturers, even um, the regulators uh, in smoothly getting them implemented. So uh, clean cooking uh, should be incorporated into the country's uh, nationally determined contributions, the key goals of the country and um, uh, other um, environmental and climate uh, policies uh, as a measure to combat uh, climate change. This is uh, a mandate uh, which has a very high... Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Chaudhary. Can we wind it up a bit sure, faster? Sure. Because... Sure. I'm actually uh, done. So, so uh, I have already mentioned uh, these pointers uh, before also that um, creating awareness uh, is the key and uh, our members, the manufacturers uh, of these appliances would be glad collaborating with BIS and B for formulating them and uh, on-ground implementation. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, very much for highlighting. But the first point was that uh, the cost of cooking is less compared to a non-subsidized uh, LPG cylinder. Secondly, you also talk about the high cost of the equipment, which can only be tackled by scalability, which you rightly said. But one of my suggestions would be to vendor development for the less dependence on import that could also lead to the reduction in cost of the uh, end product anyway that's for you have to take up with your manufacturer association who are well aware of all those policy intervention would be useful for us we will also be taking up with the government as and when the opportunity comes with them thank you very much and now uh, let's move to mr pradeep k mukherjee who is a senior advisor with class and uh, in fact, he, he, he is the person or he, it is his organization which has been providing technical support to Bureau of uh, Energy Efficiency in the development of standards and norms for appliances and equipment. So it is certainly going to be very useful, his views and uh, his side of the story. Thank you so much. Welcome, Mr. Mukherjee. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Sina, and good afternoon to you all. I have some transparency, some presentation, if you wish, I can share, or let me quickly go through that, you know, whatever I want to say. You know, let me tell you that I, though I am in class for the last 12, 13 years, but, you know, I, my root is in Bureau of Indian Standards. I worked for 30 plus years in Bureau of Indian Standards. Even today also, I am a convener of several committees, including the appliances. And let me tell you, I was very happy to listen all of you talking about the standards, because that's a subject close to my heart. So when somebody talks about the standard, definitely I feel that he has standard some value. But there's a big challenge in, in developing the standards. I'll tell you a you know, background. When I, I joined BIS, and so, sometime in 84, government brought out the quality control order. At that time, it was not 
a quality control order only for four appliances and electric stove was one of them the stove is an open coil stoves okay so open uh, electric coil uh, open coil stoves electric iron immersion water heater and electric radiator these four items were brought under mandatory certification then manufacturer started objecting that why you are i mean putting this performance requirement as a mandatory requirement because all other countries they go for the safety then we immediately we thought of okay well, let us develop the safety standards so that was the beginning of you know developing the safety standards in india and way back in 1985 and if you see the the standards number of safety standard it starts with 302 with a part 2 and the and section so it is all in line with ic you know numbering standard numbering method ic talks about 60335-2-36 in india we call it as 302-2-6 something like that so what happens that then we started developing the safety standard our main focus was on safety not the performance performance standard you know concentration the focus came only after the these labeling program started because they all concentrated and focused on energy efficiency or prior to that central pollution control board they you know under the eco labeling program that energy efficiency was try, i mean they tried to bring in the energy efficiency into the act uh, the fold of the act but finally because of the energy conservation act in 2001 then all focus shifted and and bureau of energy efficiency took up the efficiency program now how i say that challenge it is a big challenge to prepare the performance standard safety standard is very easy all parts of the world everybody is following the ic standards it is very simple because there you specify only the minimum level which is very very easy to adhere adhere performance is a difficult proposition i was a council board member in ic and also i tried to convince the ic board members that when when we have a performance standard why not you specify the, the performance requirement requirement means if i say efficiency i should say that yes this is the efficiency 65% or 80% but the, the the counter argument to us that performance is a is a cost driven you know subject and the uh, the consumer who can pay more he will get better performance but safety is the minimum so that is why we are very much particular on safety performance every country they have to take a call what should be the performance level now how to set the performance level today bis has about 20 standards on appliances appliances when they related to cooking appliances and cooking appliances i i split it into one is that which is the cook stove another is the cooking appliances out of the 20 10 are safety standards and 10 are performance standards out of the 10 standards will be surprised only four have the performance requirement now whenever bi bees you know talks about the labeling program any particular appliances immediate attention is that whether we have the test protocol to test the product whether we have the performance requirement the performance level how to do that either we look around the globe that what are the performance level uh, elsewhere uh, the people are using or countries are using or we have to collect the data from the industries thanks to industry particularly cmr representative is there and rama for the air conditioner refrigeration unit the uh, elcoma for the lamp industries the itma for the transformer industry so all these manufacturers they are so supportive they come out with their proposal that okay these are the performance value which you can adopt but that is not enough that is not sufficient in some cases i will give an example of induction stove induction stove is a very big example that we who supported testing of the product they brought bought the samples 20 samples they bought from the market got it tested in independent laboratory accredited by nbl after collecting of the samples data of 20 samples then we can came to a conclusion in consultation with the these technical committee members yeah this is the performance value we should it should be minimum and that is how the energy efficiency level of induction stoves be is going to launch sooner or later now coming to the bis so be always goes by the national standards they will be we will go for the leveling program only when there is a bis standard only in exceptional cases we goes by iso ic standard so in this case see see when the energy conservation act was you know that it was passed to the parliament i was very much involved in that in 1996 
and there was a standing instruction by the parliamentary standing committee that both bis and be should work in tandem so the tandem this is a good example of tandem that be developed the performance level which was translated and which was put in the bis standard now madam pravati was she was telling about the bis standards and induction induction stove is going to be in the introduced very soon the performance level are based on whatever the be technical committee decided based on the actual testing so performance you know level decision putting it in the standard is a big challenge either you have to have a you have to bring the manufacturing to confidence they should be very transparent in sharing their data we should have some data from the from the other countries or through some independent testing in an independent lab so that it is really a great challenge that to develop a performance standards particularly to provide the performance level because we cannot you know over standardize a standard just for the simple reason that we have to put some performance requirement first of all affordability aspect should be there component availability should be there manufacturing technique manufacturing competence should be there so all these things put together only you can develop a standard so that it meets it satisfy the consumer needs it satisfy the manufacturer also they can manufacture it also also it is affordable so these are some of the crux of the standards development process i thought that i let me share with you and not only that induction of i think all of you must be knowing that b has the leveling program for micro oven of oven also even the same methodology was is followed for the, to decide the performance level through a testing in in an independent lab and the same values has been forwarded to bis so that they can put it in their performance standards when they develop it so this is a basically a sort of a i mean good sort of a interaction and relation between the bis and b that is why b is leveling program and b's and bi standards they are very strong and very tough because it is all made in consultation with the esteem members consultants and experts so this is all in short i can say about the standards development process and the challenge in the standards i'll be happy to answer if you have any questions thank you very much thank you mr mukherjee your rich experience in bis and uh, your association with development of standards and norms for various electrical appliances uh, really we are benefited we feel benefited i think we have yet to i mean you will continue to be associated with us for uh, in various programs that we carry out and uh, your knowledge will be very useful in development of clean cooking as a system in our country so we will continue to interact with you because uh, i think 10 minutes is hardly any time to take uh, take away much from your very vast ocean of knowledge anyway now uh, mr mukherjee was the last speaker in this and uh, uh, i don't think there is any question if there is any question from the audience or uh, participant we can address them we, we can request the experts to address them so if if any question please raise your hand we will uh, we will uh, unmute and uh, unmute you to and you can guide uh, guide a person you want to ask meanwhile mr mukherjee you talked about some presentation you had brought which are transparency yeah, which let me share uh, i mean that you can share with uh, anshika i think and we will be benefited by it i mean you is it visible now no not yet no not yet anyway i'll share uh there are some question in chat that is what uh, is mentioned by one of the participant mamta tripathi oh i'll please study describe uh, yeah, so uh, 
Yeah, or Nigel. Uh, 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 Nigel has asked that uh, the uh, Ms. Parbati Nalini mentioned that induction versus LPG comparison study. So, is that uh, report is available in public? I can't say, but there are some comparison, and um, in my slide when I share, that will give you a some sort of a rough idea about the operating price uh, variation. And what are the efficiency level variation and also the cost uh, aspects also. So I think that some uh, very short sort of a comparison is there. When I share my presentation, I think you can get a little bit of information. But whether it's available on public domain or not, I'm not very sure. Madam Samuel will be able to tell that. Thank you. Uh, sir, that report is not available publicly. Mm -hmm. So not yet, sir. But I have and seen some report about the U.S. Uh, testing done on these uh, electric cook and on boiling water, which are available at the net. I mean, you can search for it. And even even at the uh, we at the uh, Mix in India has developed the e cookbook, which we compare uh, compare the cost of various fuels. So we can also share the link of that. Uh, uh, that report this is uh, this can give the glimpse of the uh, cost differences definitely there is the evidence that electric cooking is cheaper uh, even sometime with the subsidized lpg also we can share the report which is published now yeah Uh, and I, I could see a question in the chat box um, similar to um, the one which we just discussed that uh, why uh, does the more efficient induction stove uh, cost more to heat the water? Do the cost calculations here include the capital cost of the stove in some way? Uh, actually, uh, these are just the operating costs, not the capex has not been uh, included. And as uh, Mr. Mukherjee mentioned that uh, cost for uh, electrical uh, devices, elect induction uh, cooker uh, is lower than LPG. Uh, as uh, that's the same thing I had also uh, shown that uh, if we consider uh, unsubsidized, it's uh, clearly uh, uh, much lesser. Even if we uh, consider subsidized cylinder, that is almost half of uh, unsubsidized one. It's uh, more or less similar, or as uh, Mr. Mukherjee is saying, even for unsubsidized uh, one, uh, the electrical uh, uh, induction stove, et cetera, are cheaper. So that's a, a great insight that will, I think, uh, further uh, help uh, people to use them. Yeah, yeah we have noticed that uh, about 10 rupees for per 10 liter of water was a cost for uh, uh, in the LPG. If it is uh, non-subsidized, it is almost same if it is subsidized as far as induction is concerned. I mean, it is comparable. So that's a very good information. And uh, I think there is no more questions here. So uh, thank you very much once again to the participant, Mr. Mukherjee, Mr. Chaudhary, and Ms. Samal. And Dr. Nick Rissau, I, I hope he is connected even now. So, I mean, it has been really a wonderful um, discussion and uh, interaction on the subject. And uh, because of your experience, we feel benefited. We will certainly be going forward on our, um, you know, the mission of uh, clean cooking, which we have taken up. And uh, we will be interacting more with all of you as uh, as we move ahead and the new challenges which you which mr mukherjee finally talked about challenges identifying the challenges is equally important before we start solving it or addressing it <laughs> so we are still in the process of identifying the challenges and at the same time addressing the challenges which have already been identified so it's a it's a work in progress and definitely moving on track so let's hope for a more interaction and more positive movement on this. So with these remarks, anything else, uh, Vimal, you would like to say before we wind up? Uh, no, so uh, not not a specific, but, uh, but just to want to highlight that this talk series is the monthly talk series. We have already completed 12 module of phase one. Now we are entering, we have already entered into phase two, which is another 12 module. And we are talking various topics and all. So, uh, and we have created a dedicated page for that. In this, uh, we are talking about uh, uses of the electric, uh, different aspects. So, uh, so kindly, uh, kindly see there is the, 
there is the some uh, yeah, past recording are available few, uh, talking about the future uh, talk series you are going to do so please uh, feel free for that and then uh, if if I, I may talk about that next two talk series uh, the next talk series is scheduled on 17th of January on the development of component and local supply chain ecosystem for Indian device manufacturer. This is the another aspect where we are actually positioning India as the device manufacturing hub. So this uh, this can be the continuation of uh, the today's session. Exactly. Then the ne next uh, is scheduled on 16th of February which is electric cooking device requirement to solve Indian specific cooking challenges. There was some chat also available that uh, uh, chapati making is not possible and all and that's why <laughs> penetration is slow. So we will be possibly talking about those kind of uh, Indian food challenges, how actually we can solve. So these are the two uh, uh, talk series lined up related to the manufacturing of the devices. And we are happy that Mr. Ravi has already uh, mentioned that his members are ready to take the challenges. They are ready to bring down the cost and a lot of innovation can be done and also, yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. It's been great. So oh, Dr. Nick, your final word, sir? No, no, just thank you very much. It's been a okay. very okay. helpful discussion, but it's not an easy topic, and it's, uh, I think it's been well, well set out. Thank you. Right, you rightly said, and thank you very much for being present. Despite uh, some technical uh, problem in your <laughs> connection, you are back and uh, we are happy to see you. Have a nice day, Dr. Nick, and uh, uh, to everybody else, Mr. Vimal, Sheetal, Mr. Ravish, Mr. Chaudhary, Mr. Mukherjee, and Ms. Samal, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Sharing everyone. your thank you. Merry Christmas thank you. and Happy New Year. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> so, see you next year. <laughs> see you next sure. year. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.